And welcome back, I hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we're gonna take a look at GNU and Linux. More specifically, we're gonna take a look at Richard Stallman, a brief history on him, what GNU is, a brief history of GNU, and how GNU fits in with the Linux kernel. And then we'll wrap it up with a short outro. As with the Linux kernel video, please remember that if you're a longtime hardcore Linux user, this video isn't gonna offer you much. I'm just being honest here so you don't waste a lot of time watching through something you already know about. Unless of course you want to, and then by all means, I hope you do, and enjoy. This is more for the new user and those who are curious. All right, so let's start off by talking a little bit about Richard Stallman, the father of GNU, and who he is. So Stallman was born in March 1953 in New York City, and a little later in life he attended the Harvard University where he earned a degree in physics and graduated in 1974. After that, he went to Massachusetts Institute of Technology and worked in the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. While at MIT, Stallman worked on his PhD in computer science, but unfortunately did not finish it due to resigning in 1984 before the degree requirements could be completed. He left to work on GNU full-time and continued his relationship with MIT as a visiting scientist. If we take a step back one year, 1983 is the year that Stallman announced the GNU project, which we'll go into more detail here in a bit. And then in 1985, he founded the Free Software Foundation for the purpose of propagating the development and dissemination of free software. You see, Stallman is an activist of sorts, defending and promoting free software around the world. To many, he could have been the hero we don't deserve but desperately needed, especially in this day and age of DRM and predatory pricing and subscription practices. However, things took a turn for the worst in 2019, resulting in Stallman stepping down and resigning from both his roles at MIT and FSF due to some pretty significant backlash coming out in response to his position on a particular situation. Now, I'm not a political channel, nor am I a drama channel, and I'm not a reaction channel, so if you want to learn more about the whole situation, I recommend you Google it. There are plenty of articles discussing it in more detail than I'm willing to go into here. The main purpose of this video is to discuss GNU and its relationship with the Linux kernel, so I'd like to stay on that path. I just want to take a few moments to give you a little background about its creator. So despite the controversies, however, Stallman is currently back on the board of directors for FSF and continues to champion free software. A final interesting fact about Stallman before moving on to the next section is that he apparently speaks English, French, Spanish, and a bit of Indonesian. All right, so let's move on to the next section and talk about GNU. So what is GNU? First, let's start off by acknowledging that GNU is actually an acronym that stands for GNU's Not Unix, which was developed by Stallman, as mentioned before, in 1983 to create a Unix-like operating system composed of free software. An interesting point here is that attempts were made to create a kernel for GNU called Herd, which was up and running technically in 2001, but was far from finished. So if you want to know more, um, I don't want to talk about that too much here, but I'll put a link in the description below where you can check out GNU Herd's status. For our discussion though, we need to remember that GNU is normally used in combination with the Linux kernel, giving us what we have in use today with most of our distros of choice. Also remember that the Linux kernel in and of itself doesn't do us much good. In order to use our computers, we need more than just the kernel. We need the library packages and other tools combined to make a full functioning operating system. A few of the software operations brought to the Linux kernel through GNU are the GNU compiler collection, also called GCC, the GNU Emacs, which is basically a customizable text editor, the GNU Debugger, or what we call GDB, and the GNU Core Utilities, which house basic file shell and text manipulation utilities. Also note that GNU has a license called GNU General Public License, or the GPL, which protects it from being monetized and privatized. So let's take a quick moment here and talk about the principles and philosophy of free software. So the principles of the GNU project in particular are built upon the ability to run the program as you see fit, the ability to study how the program works and change it to however you want, the freedom to redistribute copies, and the freedom to modify the files as you wish and redistribute those at your discretion. So let's break down a nice little timeline so you can see the history of GNU. We'll start in 1983, as mentioned before, Stallman announces the GNU project, which I believe was in September, if I remember correctly. In 1984, Stallman left the MIT to focus on the GNU project full time. So we'll move on to 1985 through 1998, and more components of the GNU operating system were developed, which was the compiler, the debugger, and the core utilities, which we'll discuss a little later. Then we'll hop over to 1989, and the first version of GNU General Public License was released. This was also the year that Linus released the Linux kernel. And during the early 90s, developers combined the Linux kernel with the GNU system tools, which created the operating system we know today as GNU Linux. Well, not quite what we know today, because there's been quite a few advancements since then, but I think you get the picture. 
All right, so how many of you watching remember getting your free distro CDs in those old PC magazines? I think Seuss was my first one, actually. So fast forward a little bit to 2007, where we see the release of the third version of the GPL, on up to and including today. Let's take a quick moment to recognize the GNU logo real quick. It is the representation of a wildebeest facing to the right and was first drawn in 1996 by, I cannot pronounce this name, Antin Suvasas or Suvasa, and remained the same until about 2023. And it was redrawn by Peter Berwinski in 2001. There's also a third version floating around that was drawn by Aurelio Heckbert. I hope I pronounced that right. But I tried tracking down why uh, the was selected and I couldn't find anything. So it's something I'm gonna do in my spare time just out of curiosity. Okay, so how do we tie this all together? How do we tie GNU in with the Linux kernel? Essentially, in simple terms, one way to consider the relationship is that Linux kernel is the core that interacts with the hardware, while GNU provides many of the essential components, such as text editors, compilers, and debuggers needed for an operating system to fully function. Now, this video is much shorter than the Linux kernel video, uh, but I do want to take a few moments here to talk about some of the tools and utilities provided by GNU. The GNU Compiler Collection, or GCC, as we have mentioned before, is a compiler system. Okay, so what is the compiler? What does it do? Well, I pulled the definition from techtarget.com because I think it's pretty straightforward and I like it. It essentially translates a programming language's source code into machine code, bytecode, or another programming language. Also keep in mind that there are different types of compilers too. The GNU Emacs may be used to edit and write text and can be used for writing in languages like Python. It can do a lot more, of course, but this will hopefully give you a fundamental idea of its purpose. The GNU Debugger lets you find errors and or bugs in programs. And if there's a developer here, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, GDB only works with C and C++. And we've already touched on the GNU core utilities, which are basic file, shell, and text manipulation. If you're a terminal user, or if you're learning the terminal, a lot of the commands that you use come from the GNU core utilities. For example, chmod, directory, list, make directory, and so on. And just know that there are a lot of other utilities included in GNU. The above are only just a few examples. All right, so I'll go ahead and wrap the video up. I hope this was insightful or helpful to some of you, or hopefully all of you in some way or another. If it was, please consider leaving a like, and if I've made any errors or mistakes, please leave them in the comments below so I can improve. We'll come up with another video for next Wednesday or Thursday, and we'll discuss it on the Saturday channel review. And for those of you Steam enjoyers, remember that today is the day of, well, today is the first day of the Steam Summer Sale. And with all that, I thank you for watching. Stay safe out there and have a good one. I hope to see you in the next video.